everyone, my name's Matt and we're talking some more sitcom stories here and I'm delighted to be joined by a lovely boy today, uh, Pete Gibson. Lovely Hi, boy! <laughs> <laughs> and the relevance of that of course is you're playing... It, I'm playing Donna Stell from It Ain't Our Hot Mum, but there's some fam other familiar characters from the show appearing in the monologue as well. Ah, that'll yeah. be very... So you're taking on several different roles then in your monologue. Well, they were so iconic, I think, a lot of the characters, even though of course uh, in this country it's very difficult to actually even see the programme now. It is indeed. Yeah. It ain't half hot mum is not necessarily it's not a program I'm overly familiar with because yeah. unlike most of the programs of that era, it's very rarely repeated. Well, it's rarely repeated because of you know uh, perceived racism within it and homophobia, um, and that's that's what I wanted to do by writing the piece is actually ask the question you know things that are expressing views from the past. Do we ban them? Do we get rid of them completely? Or do we put them out there in the open as a historical kind of document mm. and say, this is how people thought, this is what people believed. My other argument with it, Ain't Half Hot Mum, is if you put it up against some of the other programmes that are still shown, <laughs> is it that racist and is it that homophobic? It has a gay character in it, which <coughs> apart from um, Are You Being Served, I never saw any other gay characters in early 1970s sitcoms. So that yes. was in many ways a breakthrough with um, Bombardier, Gloria Beaumont. And, <laughs> um, you know, the, I think as well, uh, the, the two South Asian actors who played the parts in Ain't Half Hot Mum had very strong views about the fact it was banned for racism because, th you know, they were, they were portraying what was happening in India and Burma at the time. Oh. And that's how, unfortunately, South Asian people were treated during the time of the British Empire. So um, while I wanted to look at the past, I um, wanted to make it contemporary as well. At the same time, it's a difficult mm. question to try. Well, it's not a difficult question to pose, it's a difficult question to answer as to whether we should yeah, it is. airbrush um, different things from yeah. history. I mean, the, the chief cause of controversy is Michael Bates, who plays Ranji Ram, who is a white man blacked up, which, mm. you know, I definitely don't agree with and I certainly would be appalled if I saw anything made now that showed that. But then when you think about Spike Milligan, how many times he did that? When you think about the two Ronnies, Jeez. how many times they did that? And of course, Michael was born in India and could speak all of the languages, which the two, the Punkawalla and the Charwalla couldn't. So, you know, they argued he was more Indian than they were. Um, so it, 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 it's, you know, if you pardon the pun, there's no black or white, is it? it's grey area, it a lot of it. Is a very great and, and I think the sad part of it is we've lost a lot of great um, comic footage because with Bates particularly actually he's a very very talented and very funny actor um, mm. and I have to say as well as, as someone who actually runs a company called Young Gifted and Black um, the, the the people of colour within that acting organisation just think it's the funniest thing they've seen and they're not at all offended by it. So it's a funny, funny world we live in. Mm. Now. And you're playing, amongst others, Donna Stell yeah. in this monologue. Who? Yeah, it's chiefly about Don, and, and the reason, Matt, that I looked at it is because um, I come from the same place, <laughs> practically, <laughs> as Don. And I didn't know that. I genuinely didn't know that. Really? Um, right. Until I just thought that accent does sound very familiar, and did the old <laughs> Wikipedia and saw that he was born in Crumpsall in North Manchester. And started to ask questions of older people I knew in the area, and they, they well, I remember Ronnie, Ronald Edwards being his real name. Um, and that's how forgotten he became. So at one point, he was in every living room in Britain, mm -hmm. and the next, I won't give away the ending, but it was quite a spectacular fall for yes, Don. So. And one, I think he spent a lot of time wondering, why has this happened to me? Quite a tragic figure in a lot of respects. And yeah, he was, um, he crossed as many entertainers did because I wouldn't say first and foremost Don was an actor, he was a fantastic singer, beautiful voice, um, and an entertainer, really. He went on to television from the working men's mm. clubs, from the um, that kind of scene in the north of England to suddenly being propelled. Mm. To 18 in million homes. Well, that's it. And of course, he also had a number one single with yeah. Whispering Grass, him and Windsor Davis. And so it's amazing. He seems to have been airbrushed from history. It's, it's uh, my, my girlfriend and her parents came to see sitcom stories. It's the original yeah. run from yeah. Manchester. And the Donna Stell monologue was one that you, 
you know, obviously enjoyed all six of them, but this mm. is one that particularly caught um, my girlfriend's mother's imagination because, as you say, Donna Stark and airbrushed in history almost. Mm. You, you, she, the talent had all been forgotten and suddenly it's there in front of her. And yeah, I mean, if you want the really tragic side of it, if you actually watch Don on some people, there's quite a lot of footage on YouTube of him towards the end of his life singing at um, country fairs and things like that. The voice is still there. Mm. Beautiful, this voice, but very frail, vulnerable looking man singing it. And it's, uh, it's difficult not to get emotional when you actually watch it. Um, I don't know. Th there's another thing, of course, all the jokes were about Don's size because he wasn't even five mm -hmm. foot. Um, I don't know whether that makes him appear a little more vulnerable than other actors from the show. But uh, again, apart from Windsor Davis and the Michael Knowles, I can't really think of anyone who went from the show onto anything, anything else. Anything else, yeah. Despite it being a big part of our sitcom heritage. As yeah, well. I mean, it's up there, isn't it, with, with Are You Being it's Served uh, and that, that ilk of, perhaps not with a... No, I'm not going to say that. I was going to say with the quality of The Good Life, but yes, it has, actually. Go away and look and watch it, watch and it. you can see yeah. that, that some of the talent in it is phenomenal. And it's sad, I think, in many ways that we're, we're robbing ourselves of being able to watch that mm. because of things that have changed slightly. I, I, I personally wonder how far it will go. Are we going to stop teaching children about Vikings because they did nasty things? You know, um, this is how life was. It's and that's what it's portraying. And it's great that it's being brought back as part of one of these six stories mm. as well, because these the six sitcom stories look behind the scenes, behind the screens, a little bit of the personalities, the people, yeah. and the stories behind each of our favourite sitcoms. And do you have a favourite sitcom of your own? <laughs> I had a feeling you would ask me that <laughs> question. Uh, there's lots of different things that make me laugh, actually. Um, the sitcom that changed it all mostly for me was the young ones, which uh, I mm -hmm. in so many ways, because, um, you know, I know Lloyd was a good friend of um, Aid and Rick, and we've just been sat in the car laughing a lot. And it, I, I can practically recite every line from the young ones. That's how much <laughs> it changed. We've had an awful day. It's rained today, and I was sitting there saying, what are you going to do, Vivian? Build a submarine, you know. <laughs> uh, so that was... But I like lots of different forms of comedy. Uh, work with a company called Laugh and Let Die, who do comedy shows all around the country. And that's classic ooh this is type double yeah, entendre comedy. And I, I think there's something very sophisticated, oddly enough, about that. Uh, I love Frankie Howard when he delivers a line. It, it's not the line, it's the look on his face. And it's the it's whole come to this, you know. It just, it it's really does It's the whole package, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, Laurel and Hardy are the yeah. two that consistently make me laugh. And I was fortunate last week to be talking about Laurel and Hardy to some older folks, and they were just saying all their memories of the films. And what sums them up best for me is when they're trying to put an aerial on the roof. I don't know if you've seen that one. A radio aerial, and of course, by the end of it, they pull the entire roof down, <laughs> and they're sat in a pond. And the genius of it for me is all the bricks have come down, and you keep thinking, "There's one more, there's one more." <laughs> and at the millisecond, you think, "Oh, maybe there isn't." Bang! Straight on Samuel's <laughs> head. It's just genius, you know. So, yeah, yeah. I'm glad Mark put them in uh, in Hancock. <laughs> they deserve a shout. They're fantastic. Oh, there's lots of little Easter eggs for our sitcom fans mm. in these as well. And you're taking on particularly, um, <laughs> you're over half the sitcom stories because you're in all three yeah, of them, aren't you? I don't you're know how that happened. I was joking before that I'm just disappointed I didn't play Margaret Thatcher. I think I would have <laughs> done a good job with that one. <laughs> well, let's hope you turn if you like, Matt. I'm not for turning. <laughs> 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 let's hope our Margaret <laughs> Thatcher isn't run well because I think you've just I got the power. I am available. <laughs> She gets a cold. <laughs> no, I, I just think the quality of the writing, and uh, I, I, I don't mean this in any other way other than admiration, when I found out that this little monologue I'd written was amongst the stuff that was on, I was felt very, uh, you know, in awe, really, because I think just some of the writing is just absolutely fantastic, and I think the actors, to a woman and a man, are all extremely good. So come and watch it. Absolutely. That's the message. Absolutely. Well, everyone needs to get themselves up to Edinburgh. It's an important piece, the Northern Theatre. It's going up to Edinburgh yeah. this summer. 
-hmm. starting the 11th of August at yeah. the Free Fringe. Yeah, going through to the 17th and uh, I'm looking forward not only to being involved but the whole adventure around it as yeah, well. Yeah, it's going to be um, quite Being together one. with fellow artists, actors, producers, mm. directors, writers. Everybody's. The best company you can have, aren't we? Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic run. Mm. We hope everyone does come and see it as well. The 11th to the 17th at the Free Fringe in Edinburgh. There's also a Kickstarter, so there's some exclusive perks in there, so do have a look at that as well. And do please go and support this important piece of theatre as everyone heads up north of the border to Edinburgh this summer. In the meantime, Pete, thank you very much thank for joining you. us. Thank and you. And hopefully we'll see you all soon.